tomorrow. We're live. Audience, please activate the backup recordings. Recording underway. Backup is rolling. Cloud is going. Hey, okay. Hello and welcome to the At this time, I ask that you please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader, we are ready to begin. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of March 25th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll begin with roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Blessed and present. Morelli. Present. Brannon. I'm here. Brooks Powers. I'm sorry, Council Member Brooks Powers. Here. Thank okay. you. Cabrera. Here. Kid. Constantinides. Carnegie. I'm here. Thank you. Deutsch. Here. Dharma Diaz. Here. Presente. Ruben Diaz. Drum. Here. Eugene. Gennaro. Here. Gibson. Blessed afternoon, I'm here. Jonai. Present. Gordenchik. I'm here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. I'm here. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Riley. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. 
Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Ulrich. Alone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. I'm here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. <clears throat> Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Arya Katzen, the Executive Director and Spiritual Leader of Russian American Jewish Experience, located at 2915 Ocean Parkway in Brooklyn. Thank you. We are gathered virtually, and even though each of us is in a separate location, we are nevertheless united. We are united in our commitment to serve the people of this great city of New York. We all share the pain of the families who have lost their loved ones in this terrible pandemic, and wish a full and speedy recovery to the sick. We also feel the pain of isolation, poverty, and divisiveness that in different ways have affected us all. I am deeply moved today because exactly 40 years ago, I emigrated from the Soviet Union and for the first time celebrated Passover, not only as the exodus of my people from Egypt, but also my personal liberation from Soviet slavery. I share the experience of all immigrants who arrived at the shores seeking liberty and justice for all. I'm a Russian Jew. Many members of my family and millions of my people were murdered by the Nazis during the Holocaust. While the survivors became targets of discrimination and cultural genocide under the brutal communist regime, what made these crimes possible was that the tyrants first suppressed the freedom of speech. People were scared to protest hatred, terrified to protect each other. Passover is a holiday of freedom, but in Hebrew, Pesach hints that the very basic freedom of all is the freedom of speech. Because Pesach also means the mouth speaks. On Passover, we speak with our families and friends, sharing the story of freedom and love for others. There are more than 600 languages spoken in New York. We need to be courageous to express ourselves in our unique way. And we need to be respectful to protect the rights of others to express themselves without fear, even when we disagree with them. Nazis and communists committed their crimes because they just followed orders. They were scared of their tyrants and served their dictators, not their citizens. They served themselves, failing to feel the pain of their people. May God give us a loving and understanding heart to feel the pain of the oppressed, respecting the image of God in every human being, regardless of faith, color, or race. May we see the good in others, and in that merit, reveal the greatness within ourselves. May God bless us with courage to serve our people, every single one of them, and elevate them all 
from despair to hope and from slavery to freedom. God bless America and the great city of New York. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that very timely prayer um, and for giving us so much hope and inspiration through your own challenges that you've been able to share with us today. At this time, I would like to call on Councilmember Chaim Deutsch to spread the invocation on the record. And I thank you so much, Rabbi Katzen, for being with us today and for sharing your words of wisdom um, with each and every one of us. Councilmember Deutsch. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. In just over 48 hours, Jewish people across the globe will welcome the holiday of Passover. What better way to head into the important holiday of Passover than to hear those remarkable words from Rabbi Aryeh Katzin, who himself celebrated 40 years of freedom from the Soviet Union. Rabbi Katzin is the executive director of RAGE, the Russian-American Jewish experience. He is a spiritual leader to young people in the immigrant community, guiding and educating them about life, religion, and righteousness. When Rabbi Katzin immigrated from the, from the former Soviet Union and settled in Brooklyn, he immediately got to work establishing a welcoming com community for his fellow immigrants. He founded the Sinai Academy to teach children about their heritage. And he established a Russian language newspaper to connect members of the growing community with each other. Rabbi Katzin is a fixture in Southern Brooklyn community and a role model to thousands. It is an honor to know him and to be inspired by his resilience and strength. Thank you for all those inspiring words, Rabbi Katzin, and I wish you and all who are celebrating a Chag Kasha V'Sameach, which means a happy, meaningful holiday. I also want to wish all those who are celebrating Easter a joyful and peaceful holiday. And with Ramadan uh, just several weeks away, I also want to wish all those observing a meaningful and blessed month. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Councilmember Chaim Deutsch. We appreciate you sharing your treasures from your community with the entire city of New York. Thank you, Majority Leader. <laughs> we will now move into the adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M294, certification of election of Selvina N. Brooks Powers, new council member, 31st district. Congratulations to our new colleague, received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M295, Sidem Street rezoning. Thank you at this time, I'm asking for the clerk to take a roll call vote on this single land use call-up. Again, we're just voting on this land use call-up item. Good afternoon, Adams. I vote aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Thank you. Ambry Samuel. Aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Did you hear me? Oh, thank you. Yes. Baron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Brooks Powers. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. I vote aye. Constantinidis. Carnegie. I vote aye. Thank you. <coughs> Deutsch. I vote aye. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye. Ruben Diaz. Me? Drum. I vote aye. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Gennaro. Yes. Gibson. 
Agorai. Jonai. Aye. You. Gorenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. I vote aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. I vote aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Mizell. Council member Mizell? Yes. Thank you. Menchaka. Aye. Miller. Councilmember Miller, I believe you're muted. Councilmember Miller. Councilmember Miller, can you hear us? Absolutely. You know, we virtually live as well. So. Councilmember Council Miller. Miller. Councilmember yeah, Miller. Definitely. Let's yeah, mute Councilmember Miller and move on. Let's do that. Okay, we'll come back. Moya. I vote aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Riley. I'm sorry, Councilmember Riley. Vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Thank you. Salamanca. I would aye. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Thank you. Jaeger. Aye. Thank you. Constantinidis. Aye. What does that mean? Uh, Council Member Miller? Aye. Thank you. Matteo? Aye. Combo? I vote aye. Speaker Johnson? I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups have a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Today's land use call-up is adopted. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Welcome to our stated meeting today. Spring is finally here. Better days are hopefully ahead for our city and country. More people are getting vaccinated daily. It's becoming easier for friends and family to gather safely and the federal stimulus package will soon be on its way to help us recover. But COVID-19 is not our city's only problem. We still have a crisis when it comes to the distrust between police and communities. And we still have a lot of work to do to build accountability in the NYPD and reform the nation's largest police force. Today, the council is taking some steps toward that goal. This is ongoing work that won't end with today's votes. We also have a bill today that helps commercial tenants by extending, pan, uh, extending a pandemic protection that we uh, voted on last year. But sadly, COVID-19 is still very much a reality in New York City. As of yesterday, 30,793 people, New Yorkers, have died from COVID-19. 
It's important for us to continue to remember the New Yorkers that we've lost and the loved ones that they've left behind. Today is also the anniversary of two tragedies that forever changed our city. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire in Manhattan and the Happy Land Social Club Fire in the Bronx. In 1911, the fire at the Triangle Shirtwaist Company Factory in Greenwich Village killed 146 workers. These were mostly women and girls, young Jewish and Italian immigrants working in sweatshops. The tragedy started the American labor movement by exposing the horrific and dangerous working conditions that these workers and women endured. And as we continue to fight for workers' rights, we remember the lives lost in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. Today, we also remember another New York City tragedy. As I said, in 1990, 87 people were killed in an act of arson at the Happy Land Social Club in the Bronx. The club was ordered to be closed because of building violations dating back to 1988, including lack of fire exits. And while we continue to improve oversight of bad landlords, we must remember the victims of the Happy Land Social Club fire. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge some other sad losses in our city. I'm sad to say that we had another on-the-job death on February 26. Scott Keegan, a sheet metal worker, died after falling from an upper floor of the NYU Langone Ambulatory Care Center in Manhattan. He was 52 years old. Last week, we lost retired police detective Patrick Caprice. He is... He, he, uh, Detective Caprice survived being shot three times in 2005 after pulling over a car, but died on March 15th after going into medical distress. He was 58 years old. He was the epitome of bravery, service, and sacrifice, and our thoughts are with his loved ones as they mourn. Not even a week after the mass shooting in the Atlanta area, on Monday we learned of another heartbreaking massacre, this time 10 people were killed in Boulder, Colorado, including a police officer. No one should have to worry that a rage-filled gunman will kill them or their loved ones. We need gun control. We need it now. No more excuses. As I do in every state, I would like to recognize the lives of those who we recently lost to 9-11 related illnesses. We've lost retired FDNY Captain Frank Portell. He was 51 years old. Retired firefighter Joseph Boyle, who volunteered in the cleanup efforts at the World Trade Center. Retired police officer Timothy Motto, he was 63 years old. We are sending our deepest condolences to their families and friends. So let us pause for a moment of silence for the lives that we've lost to this pandemic, to the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire, the Happy Land Social Club fire, the Colorado mass shooting, and for sheet metal worker Scott Keegan, Police Officer Detective Patrick Caprice, Fire Captain Frank Portell, Police Officer Joseph Boyle, and Police Officer Timothy Motto. Thank you. Before we dive into our agenda, I wanna take a moment to welcome to the council our newest colleague, Council Member Selvina Brooks Powers. She represents Council District 31, which includes Laurelton, Far Rockaway, Springfield Gardens, and other great neighborhoods. Council Member Brooks Powers replaces the now Queensborough President Donovan Richards, and we welcome her. We're so glad we are uh, that you were at your first stated meeting. We look forward to working with you and supporting you. Congratulations, Council Member Brooks Powers. Welcome to your first stated meeting of the New York City Council. Passover begins on Saturday at sundown. At the Seder table, the Jewish people recount how they became free after hundreds of years of slavery and bondage. So to all those who celebrate the Festival of Freedom, uh, I want to say have a happy Passover and may you have a peaceful and meaningful holiday. Next week is also, as Councilmember Deutsch said, the start of Holy Week, the week leading up to Easter. This is a time of reflection, hope, and renewal for many Christians, for all of those observing, I wish them a peaceful and reflective week and a happy Easter. Now on to our agenda on the Land Use Committee, we'll be voting on several items. Arvern East 
which is a HPD proposal of a series of applications to facilitate a new mixed use development within the Arvern urban renewal area. And this is in council member uh, Selvina Brooks Powers' district. And I wanna congratulate her on the approval of her first land use application. Lower East Side cluster, a UDAP and Article 11 tax exemption in Councilman Rivera's district. We'll also be voting on several HPD UDAP applications in Councilman Perkins' district. 50-25 Barnett Avenue rezoning in Council Member Van Bramer's district, 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning in Council Member Vanessa Gibson's district. Now out of the Finance Committee, we'll be voting on a pre-considered resolution number 1583, sponsored by Council Member Francisco Moya, which supports State Senate Bill 4482 and its companion bill in the Assembly 5092, which would impose a new tax on billionaires. The proposed mark to market tax would tax the increase in value of billionaires assets at the same rate as other income. While New Yorkers struggle to make ends meet, the state's 120 billionaires are $87.7 billion richer than they were just one year ago. They of course can certainly afford to pay more, particularly when so many people continue to suffer from the COVID-19 pandemic. And that is why this resolution further calls for revenue generated from this tax to be used to establish a $3.5 billion excluded workers fund to assist the hundreds of thousands of workers who have been excluded from receiving benefits like unemployment insurance because of their immigration status or recent incarceration. Many of these workers were employed in essential jobs such as cleaning, home health care, food delivery, and many other jobs until many of them lost their jobs or became ill with COVID-19 and could no longer work. And the fact that they are barred from receiving benefits like unemployment insurance and other, other federal benefits is unjust and wrong. And I wanna thank from the staff, Noah Brick and Rebecca Chasen for working on that. Moving into our legislative agenda, first the council will vote on introduction number 2243A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera. This bill extends Local Law 55, which suspended personal liability provisions in leases of businesses that were required to close as part of the state's efforts to control the spread of COVID-19. This meant that commercial landlords who were not getting rent could not go after an individual guarantor's personal assets, including their home. The council will vote today to extend the time frame on the protection from March 31st, 2021 to June 30th. And I wanna thank from the staff, Noah Mexler and Stephanie Jones. The next set of bills are part of a package to increase NYPD accountability and to reimagine public safety in our city. Our first policing bill is out of our governmental affairs committee and it will remove the NYPD's authority to revoke or suspend press credentials. Introduction number 2118A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, will transfer authority over press credentials from the NYPD to the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. This bill would eliminate the NYPD's authority to issue, suspend, or revoke press credentials and transfer that authority to MOM. Under this bill, MOM would be required to promulgate rules setting forth application procedures for press credentials, uh, criteria for the denial of an application and criteria for the suspension or revocation of a credential. And from the staff, I wanna thank CJ Murray, Elizabeth Cronk and Emily Forgione. Next, we have a bill from the Civil and Human Rights Committee, introduction number 2212A, sponsored by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, will clarify that the Civilian Complaint Review Board has the power to investigate bias-based policing and racial profiling complaints made by the public. This bill is a direct result of the council's work to uncover the racist head of the NYPD's EEO division, James Cobell. It would empower the board to investigate past professional conduct of any police officer who was found to be engaged in bias. The bill would also require the NYPD to engage an independent consultant to review cases handled by the NYPD's EEO division. And I wanna thank from the staff, uh, Janita John, uh, uh, Jayasri Jay Janapathy, Wiam Diori, Emily Rooney, Natasha Major, and Jonathan Maserano. 
Next, we're voting on a bill out of the Transportation Committee, introduction number 2224A, sponsored by Council Member Idanis Rodriguez, who require the Department of Transportation to create a crash investigation and analysis unit tasked with investigating, analyzing, and reporting on all vehicle crashes involving significant injury. In addition to its crash investigation functions, the unit created by this legislation would be responsible for public statements regarding serious vehicular crashes and would be required to make recommendations for safety improving changes to street design and infrastructure and to post quarterly reports regarding its crash reviews on the Department of Transportation website. The legislation also makes clear that nothing in the bill inhibits or interferes with the NYPD's ability to conduct criminal investigations. Many serious vehicular crashes would be prevented through changes to the design and infrastructure of streets and intersections following an in-depth analysis of the factors that led to a crash. However, at present, serious crash investigations are in the purview of the Collision Investigation Squad at the NYPD and a DOT liaison. These resources are deployed to conduct systematic investigations at fewer than 350 crash sites per year. And from the staff, I wanna thank Elliot Lynn and Annie Levers. Finally, out of the Public Safety Committee, we're voting on two bills and three resolutions. Resolution number 1538A, sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, supports State Senate Bill 5252 and its companion bill in the Assembly 6012, which will provide final discipline authority over civilian complaints to the Civilian Complaint Review Board, removing the police commissioner's exclusive authority over discipline. The state legislation is sponsored by State Senator Jamal Bailey and Assemblymember Catalina Cruz. While the CCRB can recommend discipline against officers, the police commissioner has final authority over discipline and can choose to disregard these recommendations and may impose lesser or greater discipline or no discipline at all. Also, resolution number 1547, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, supports State Senate Bill 6012 and its companion bill in the Assembly 1951. And those bills are sponsored by State Senator Kevin Parker and Assembly Member Catalina Cruz, respectively. The bills establish a residency requirement for police officers in cities with a population of 1 million or more residents, includes New York City. If passed, the legislation would require newly hired NYPD officers to live within one of the five boroughs of New York City. The last resolution, resolution number 1584 from the Public Safety Committee is on the adoption of a policing plan. In June, the governor issued an executive order requiring every jurisdiction in New York State to produce a policing plan by April 1st. If the council does not adopt a plan, the state is allowed to withhold state and federal pass-through funding to the tune of billions of dollars. The council only received the full draft of the mayor's plan on March 12th, so we have not had much time, but we did make some significant improvements. We removed old accomplishments and anything that increased the NYPD's footprint. We added deadlines and responsible parties. We enhanced public transparency by adding public notice and stakeholder engagement requirements. And one element that I'm really proud of is that we secured more than $70 million for initiatives to support and expand public safety alternatives to policing and incarceration and ensure that the city lives up to its commitments. That's $30 million for students, social, emotional, and behavior needs in schools, more than $18 million for mental health services and underserved communities. We're gonna triple our cure violence workforce by next summer. We added 5,000 new SYP slots for CUNY students. This plan is far, far from perfect, but I think we as a council did the best we could in making some improvements under an extraordinarily difficult timeline. I wanna thank uh, all the members that pushed the administration here, particularly the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus. And I really wanna thank council member Adrian Adams, the chair of our public safety committee in the midst of dealing with a personal tragedy. She worked on this nonstop uh, all over the administration, uh, pushing them, working with the staff, working with advocates. Uh, she did an incredible job and I'm really grateful to you, Adrian, for your leadership. In addition, we're voting on introduction number 1671A, sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams, the chair of our public safety committee, 
which will require the New York City Police Department to issue a quarterly report on all vehicle stops. The report would include the number of summonses issued, arrests made, vehicles seized, related use of force incidents, and vehicles searched and whether consent was provided. This information will be disaggregated by precinct, race, ethnicity, and age of the driver. We're also voting on introduction number 2220A, sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, to end qualified immunity for police officers. Qualified immunity is rooted in our nation's systemic racism. It was established in 1967 in Mississippi to prevent freedom riders from holding public officials liable even when they break the law. It denied those freedom riders justice and it has been used to deny justice to victims of police abuse for decades. It never should have been allowed. It should have been ended decades ago and it must end now in New York City. Introduction number 2022A will establish a local right of security against unreasonable search and seizure and against excessive force regardless of whether such force is used in connection with a search or seizure. And again, I wanna thank from the staff, Janita John, Emily Rooney, Pearl Moore, Natasha Major, and Jonathan Maserano. That is our agenda today. Uh, thank you all. With that, I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. As a reminder, this section is only for items we will be voting on for general orders today. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Is Mr. Parliamentarian um, on the Zoom at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. If you could give further clarity so that we are clear on issues that can be discussed, legislative matters that can be discussed during this discussion of general orders, I think it would be helpful to all of the members. Yes, Madam Majority Leader. So we will be discussing at this juncture all items that the speaker just discussed with the exception of the following resolutions. Resolution 1538A, uh, having to do with uh, the police commissioner's exclusive authority over police discipline. Resolution 1547, requiring NYPD officers to live within the five boroughs. Pre-considered resolution 1583, which would establish the billionaire mark to market tax. Pre-considered resolution 1584, uh, adopting a plan pursuant to state executive order number 203. So we will be discussing all items except for those resolutions. All discussion about those resolutions will take place during discussion of resolutions. Thank you so much for the clarity. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak on the following legislative agenda? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Adams, Van Bramer, and Gennara. You may begin, Council Member Adams. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, before I begin my remarks, I just <clears throat> and congratulate my sister from Southeast Queens and our newest addition to the Women's Caucus, Council Member Sylvina Brooks Powers. She's passing her very first piece of legislation in the land use space today during her very first stated meeting. And that's a really, really big deal. Congratulations, Sylvina. I'm so, so happy to have you here. Madam Majority Leader, this afternoon, we will vote on a number of groundbreaking police reform bills by the New York City Council that I believe will truly make a difference in our city. My bill, Intro 1671, will change how the NYPD records and reports on vehicle stops. The NYPD will be required to report on the number of summonses issued, arrests made, vehicles seized, and more. This information will be broken down by precinct, race, ethnicity, and age. This is very significant because stop and frisk was not the only tool that police have used to harass black and brown New Yorkers who can attest to what it's like to be stopped by the police and the consequences of those harmful interactions. 
We have no idea how bad this problem is in New York because the NYPD doesn't track it. They don't record many stops if there's no traffic ticket issued or arrests made at all. Intro 1671 remedies this by requiring the documentation of all vehicle encounters, which will shed light on who's being stopped and what happens as a result. I ask all of my colleagues to vote in favor of my bill, Intro 1671. And uh, I will add that it is not lost on me that we have now included another powers and another as, as well to add to the second DS that we have of this council. <laughs> we welcome the expansion of our colleagues. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Adams. And we continue to lift you up because you continue to do incredible work under such challenging circumstances. Council Member Van Bramer. Time Thank you very much. Now. It has taken five years to get to today's vote on building truly affordable housing in Sunnyside Gardens, the neighborhood I live in. The project before us today is 100% affordable and vastly improved from the one I rejected four years ago. Affordability levels represent the deepest we've seen in Sunnyside, with a set aside for formerly homeless families and many units at 40% of AMI with a maximum of 80% AMI. 32BJ has testified in favor of this project, something they did not do four years ago. I'm proud that we secured good jobs, good wages, with benefits for workers. The building height has been brought down and is now contextual. And while more progress needs to be thanks to Community Board 2, there is a real action plan of immediate improvements that FIPS is complying with. It should also be noted that CB2 voted unanimously against this project four years ago, but overwhelmingly in favor of this particular proposal. It also has the support of the Queensborough president. While some have used disingenuous arguments against this project, I will not deny homeless families and low wage workers a home by allowing the perfect to be the enemy of the good. We who proclaim ourselves progressives say we want to build truly affordable housing. And when we get the chance to do so, we should, particularly in expensive neighborhoods like Sunnyside. We who say we are progressives say we want to permanently house the homeless. And when we get the chance to do so, we must. Everyone must be welcome in the Sunnyside Woodside area that I am lucky enough to call home. And with this vote, we have a chance to say that emphatically. And those of us, who are progressives and say we're for the Green New Deal should want to replace a surface parking lot with affordable housing and not allow NIMBY arguments to stop Hi, truly sorry. affordable housing to be built on this site. I'm proud to support it, ask my colleagues to support it. I want to thank Chairs Boya and Salamanca and their committees for already voting in favor of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Van Bramer. Council Member Gennaro. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Leader. I, I feel compelled to go on the record regarding some of the very important bills that we'll be voting on today. First, regarding uh, proposed intro 2118. This bill affects the NYPD leadership, not the rank and file. And I think the department can take some hard questions from reporters. So I'll be voting yes on this, and I urge my colleagues to vote for it. I'll be adding my name as a uh, co sponsor. Uh, next, uh, proposed intro 2212 regarding the investigation of biased police officers. Uh, the NYPD had a stone bigot running its EEO division. So this council, I believe, has not only the right, but the obligation to pass this bill. I will vote yes on this bill. I urge my colleagues to do so as well. And I will add my name as a co-sponsor. Regarding proposed intro 2212, 4A about the DOT collision uh, squad. I support this bill and I urge my colleagues to support it. Uh, re <clears throat> um, regarding proposed intro 1671A, this bill seems to rest on the thesis that the police are engaging in racist behavior and profiling when it comes to traffic stops. I do believe this thesis needs to be tested and the collection of such data does have value to test this thesis. The question is how to test this thesis most efficiently without placing an undue burden on the department. I believe that a bill that mandates the collection of these data periodically 
and random precincts would yield the same validation or invalidation of this thesis for much less effort. I would happily, I would happily support such a bill, but this bill is written, I see as an undue burden. So I'll be voting no and I urge my colleagues to vote no as well. Uh, we're going to propose intro 2220 uh, about ending qualified immunity. Uh, my, view, uh, my view is that constitutional rights are inviolable and to the extent that anyone could be allowed to invoke immunity in violating one's constitutional rights, uh, such that a person who has had their rights violated has no recourse to seek redress is, in my opinion, violative of the Constitution itself. Every member in this body took the same oath to uphold the Constitution. And by voting yes on this bill, I believe I'll be doing exactly that. I urge my colleagues to support this very important bill, and I'll be adding my name as a co-sponsor. Thank you for uh, being uh, uh, generous with my time. Thank you, Council Member Gennaro. We will now move to other members who wish to speak at this time. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there other members who wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Barron, Holden, and Chin. Council member Barron, you may begin following the clock time. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Majority Leader. I actually wanted to speak uh, I'll just explain my vote so that we can move the time along. Uh, thank you, Mr. Parliamentarian. Thank you. Okay, we will move to Council Member Holden. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I need to express my extreme frustration with some of these so-called police reform bills that have made it on our agenda today for a vote. Once again, the city council rushes through legislation that will have a serious impact on residents' public safety in the city. We live in an upside down town where wrong is right, cops are villains, criminals are victims, and virtues are vices. Some of the bills that we are voting on today will endanger the public and put our constituents in harm's way. This year alone, we've had 250 New Yorkers shot, which is over 40% higher than last year. Our constituents are begging us to handle the uptick in crime and violence in neighborhoods throughout the city. We are passing bills that will only make it more difficult for law enforcement to do their jobs, which is to protect and serve. This legislative body turns its back on policies that we know made New York the safest big city in the world for decades in favor of protest slogans. Our police officers are then sent out there with their hands tied. And some of my colleagues then have the nerve to accuse them of a slowdown, whether it's the ill-advised diaphragm law or, or our state legislators' reckless actions in Albany passing bail reform, this city faces a crisis and we are only making matters worse. This assault on the NYPD is an assault on our constituents. We need to start listening to the public we represent and govern in the real world, not Twitter echo chambers. The people who put us in office to represent their needs are crying for help. They feel unsafe walking the streets or riding the subways. Some of these bills are reckless, not well thought out, and will make New York City more dangerous. I am not opposed to all police reform, but the vast majority of our police join the NYPD for the right reasons to do a great job. In fact, if you mention New York City to law enforcement officers from anywhere in the world, they will tell you that the NYPD is the gold standards. These bills would get more New Yorkers killed, both police and civilians, and result in New Yorkers not getting the help they need. Ending qualified immunity would discourage the best young men and women in our city from joining the police force. Ending it will make it harder to recruit young, bright young people to join the force. Even police officers acting in good faith could be held personally liable. Um, you know, it's, it's the vehicle stop reporting bill not only would place an unreasonable burden on police, but it would force them into an unworkable position of having to somehow ascertain the race and ethnicity, ethnicity of members of the public likely to result in greater tension. It's time to do our jobs and vote no on these bills, which our constituents expect of us. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Holden. We will now go to Council Member Chen. Time starts now. 
Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I know that we are, I support all the police reform bill that we are voting on today. And as the speaker said earlier, um, the city's policing reform process is not perfect. And in this council, I have joined my colleague in advocating for police reform for many, many years, starting with the Community Safety Act. And we will continue to do that. And we have been fighting for resources to support anti-violence program, our youth, and many more. And I am really saddened because of this vote today that my office and myself has been attacked on social media and my office phone has gotten inundated with phone call because of individual and group spreading misinformation. Our community, the Asian community has been under attack. And I am so proud that all my colleagues and community group have come together to support us, to stand with my community and ask how we can help. And now, how can these individual and so-called advocates out there, if you wanna stand with us, why are you creating misinformation and attacking our community? The Asian, the anti-Asian hate crime task force, do you know, even know what that is? The officer working in there are volunteer. Our community are asking for more support to help them report the crime, to help protect them. We have to work together, not divide us. I mean, I myself is an Asian woman. And I'm getting attacked from Asian women feminists on my record of all the things that I have supported in the council. I mean, come on, let's Time expired. stop this and work together if we really want to stop hate. Language access is important in every city agency and especially in the police department. And we have to get that for our community. So let's work together and not fight against each other. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chen. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. The next three are Council Members Rodriguez, Levin, and Borelli. I'd just like to remind members because the, the list is extensive for um, members to speak at this time, as well as during the vote. I know that members are also going to wish to speak um, as well as during the resolutions and uh, general discussion. So if we could stick to the time clock, I'm gonna to try to hold it a bit tighter because this meeting could go um, quite extensively if we don't. So I'll begin right now with council member Rodriguez. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. And I understand that by the same time, I feel that today is like one of those special days that all of us will be so proud of the legacy that we are living when it comes to police reforms. And one of the bills that I want to talk is the one that I had the opportunity to lead together with Speaker Johnson and other colleagues, the one that we transferred the, the investigation squad unit from NYPD to DOT. It is time for all of us to understand that it, we will be able to get rid of the COVID-19 pandemic, hopefully very soon. However, there's another pandemic that has been killing so many great New Yorkers. Mm -hmm. And that's the one of hit and run. That's the one of crashes. That's the one where last year we had more than 44,000 people that they were victim of crashes in New York City. And an average of 300 people dying every year because criminal drivers are leaving the scene, many of them and all their unfortunately not understanding that the, our street doesn't belong to car owners, but the street belongs to all of us. So and today is a great day as we are voting this bill that we transfer the investigation squad unit from, DOT, from NYPD to DOT. We heard our DAs, we heard the advocate, but also we heard transportation alternative, we heard family for safe street. I thank Speaker Johnson and thanks Mayor de Blasio also for getting his thing in the city hall to work with us and come out with a compromise so that we are voting this bill. Hoy estamos haciendo historia votando un proyecto de ley donde pasamos el control de la unidad que investiga los casos de choques, especialmente los de hit and run 
que ocurren en Nueva York, de la policía al departamento de transportación. De esa forma haremos de las calles lugares más seguros para los peatones y los ciclistas. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. We will now go to Council Member Levin. Time starts now. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very humbled to be with you all today to vote on this remarkable set of legislation. I'm especially grateful to be sponsoring intro 2220A, which would end qualified immunity here in New York City. Qualified immunity has a very complex history as a legal doctrine, but it actually concerns a very simple and fundamental issue in our democracy. Since 1792, Americans have had the constitutional right under the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures. And we have had the right since 1868 under the 14th Amendment to due process under the law. Recognize that recognizing that people who have these rights violated need an actual recourse, Congress passed the Enforcement Act of 1871, also known as the Ku Klux Klan Act, in which Section 1983 established the right of action where, quote, every person who under the color of any statute, ordinance, regulation, custom, or usage of any state or territory or in the District of Columbia subjects or causes to be subjected any citizen of the United States or other persons within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws shall be liable to the party injured in an action at law, suit in equity, or other proper proceedings for redress. Seems simple enough. Fast forward 96 years to 1967 in a case Pearson v. Ray where a group of Freedom Rider clergymen were seeking to recover damages for their unconstitutional arrest in Mississippi in 1961, the Supreme Court established a judicial doctrine of qualified immunity, where a government employee is now granted immunity from a lawsuit if they demonstrate, quote, good faith in conducting an unconstitutional <laughs> stop and seizure. The Supreme Court further increased the hurdles to claim <laughs> seeking redress by allowing officers to invoke qualified immunity unless the unconstitutional act violated a, quote, clearly established law in 1982. Quoting Jay uh, Schweikert from the Cato Institute, quote, in I'm practice, excited. this legal standard is a huge hurdle for civil rights plaintiffs because it generally requires them to identify not just a clear legal rule, but a prior case with functionally identical facts. He goes on to say, quote, qualified immunity is one of the most obviously unjustified legal doctrines in our nation's history, close quote. I'll finish uh, my remarks uh, when I explain my vote. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. Thank you uh, for bringing us that important history on this particular bill. Council Member Borelli. Time you, starts Mayor. now. Thank you. Um, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that each of us, uh, each of us 51, are individually beneficiaries of qualified immunity ourselves. Uh, we each represent 170,000 New Yorkers, and collectively we, we represent over 8 million. And, and many of the decisions we make or actions we take can harm any one of them or any member of the public or anyone we employ. And yet we are also an in, personally and individually protected by qualified immunity. Uh, if we get sued, our general counsel will represent us. It doesn't cost us anything. Uh, and in fact, when, and I heard uh, Council Member Levin mention the 1982 case of Harlow v. Fitzgerald, that case wasn't even about police officers. Uh, it, it was about the staff of elected officials. So the modern doctrine of qualified immunity actually came out of a case um, involving White House staff. Uh, victims have recourse in New York City. The city has paid over $5 billion in the last five years in civil actions against the NYPD. So today, essentially, the council is saying that qualified immunity is good for us and good for other city employees, but it's not good enough for those New Yorkers who we ask to risk their lives to protect us and oftentimes engage with, with violent criminals who have no care or regard for our laws. So I would ask my colleagues to vote no on the qualified immunity legislation, or at least voluntarily forego your own qualified immunity if and when you are sued. So thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Borelli. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Reynoso, Miller, and Gibson. Council Member Reynoso, hold, you may begin. I'm going to hold my comments to the vote. Um, I have advice from the Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now have Council Member. 
I'm sorry, I couldn't read my own writing. Miller. Council member Miller followed Miller by Council member Gibson. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, with respect to in, uh, intro 2224, uh, while I agree is well-intended legislation, uh, it is ultimately flawed. In this bill, we are voting to allow New York City DOT to be both judge and jury on our streets. They will design them and then they will be responsible for holding accountable those who, the failure of their design, and then maybe be responsible for who takes the blame. This agency has not been responsible for its own shortcomings. The Department of Transportation has run roughshod over New York City communities, community boards, civic associations, and residents, and is infamously unresponsive and prioritizes enforcement before outreach, education, and engineering. DOT job performance in recent years has been woefully insufficient. The agency fails at the most basic level to replace street signs, to fix street markings, and address basic safety concerns. It takes three years on average to give a speed hump, evaluate it and install. This is not an agency prepared to handle more responsibilities. Let's me, let me also say that particularly alarming, that is particularly alarming that this legislation is moving in the spirit of police reform. This DOT has treated communities of color with borderline contempt, while white communities got bike share and fully built out bus lanes and capital infrastructure our communities were told to wait and then given punitive enforcement cameras instead. I cannot vote today to add another $3 million to DOT's budget to allow this agency to duplicate the professional services provided by trained experts at the Collision Investigation Squad. We would be better off spending these resources with CSI to better support the work that they are doing. I would also note that all this, these are the sentiments of all, three, all five expired. attorneys uh, and they have resubmitted their testimony uh, in opposition to this legislation. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Miller. We'll go, now go to Council Member Gibson. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker and all my colleagues. I wanna quickly speak in favor of one of the land use applications on 1099 Webster Avenue submitted by 1099 Webster Realty in my district. I'm very excited about this project. I've been working on it for over two years, located at the intersection of Webster Avenue and 167th Street in my district, the Claremont community. And this project will include two residential buildings. One is a nine-story building, and the other is an 11-story building with a combined total of 238 residential units, affordable for the local residents, as low as 27% of the AMI, up to 80% of the AMI, under the HPD's ELLA program. We will have a minimum of 10% of the units are three bedroom apartments, which I'm very excited about, as we will also have uh, local set-asides at minimum 15% for formerly homeless families. We have about 30,000 square feet of commercial retail that will include medical facilities and supermarket, indoor parking, and all of the amenities that we truly need in the Bronx. I'm very grateful that we will have temporary construction jobs, permanent jobs, and a new partnership with local 32 BJ SEIU. Um, the applicant will work through Hire NYC and the MWBE Build Up Program, making sure that we hire locally. And a lot of these provisions are incorporated in a written document that we received at the council, the land use division by the developer. I wanna thank the Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. and his team for their recommendations as well as local community board four for all of their hard work in making sure that this is a project that we can all support that provides real affordable housing for residents of the Bronx, local set aside, as well as local hiring and MWBE provisions. I ask all of my colleagues to please support this legislation. And I wanna thank Raju Mann, Amy Levitan, Katie Sullivan, and everyone at the Land Use Division for all of their work on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. All right. <laughs> We will now move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, intro 2212A, bias-based policing. Amended and coupled on general orders. 
Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 2118A, Press Credentials. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LUs 733 and 734, 737 Fourth Avenue Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LUs 738 and Reso 1585 through LU 740 and Reso 1587, Arverne East. Coupled on general orders. LU 741 and Reso 1588, Lower East Side Cluster. Couple of general orders. LU 743 and Reso 1589 through LU 747 and Reso 1593, various Harlem applications. Couple of general orders. LU 748 and Reso 1594 and 749 and Reso 1595, 5025 Barnett Avenue rezoning. Couple of general orders. LU 750 and Reso 1596 and 751 and Reso 1597, 1099 Webster Avenue. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 1671A, Traffic and Counter Reports. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 2220A, Ending Qualified Immunity. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered Resolution 1582, Council Committee Changes. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 2243A, Protection for Commercial Tenants. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 2224A, Crash Investigation and Analysis Unit. Amended and coupled to general orders. And at this time, I'm asking for the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general orders calendar. Adam. I will be voting aye on all with the exception of Intro 2224 for all of the reasons stated by Councilmember Miller. Thank you. And Bree Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I want to first say welcome and congratulations to Councilwoman Brooks Powers. It took a lot for you to get here to this day, and this is your time. Congratulations to my colleagues for the package of bills that are being passed today. But I just have to make a comment. As a Black woman living in New York City, and currently living in one of New York's toughest neighborhoods, getting public safety right literally hits home. Um, what's amazing to me is how when you listen to some of the comments today, we are divided as a body, just as we have seen our country divided. And that's a fact. But we all represent very distinct constituencies because this is New York City and we are a very diverse city. So while I do appreciate all of the voices today, it is clear that we need to continue to have these public meetings, these public hearings, these public settings, so people can hear what is being said by all members. Again, I appreciate the voices, but sometimes I don't need certain people to speak for me, speak for your constituency. I appreciate you speaking for your constituency, not the entire city of New York. So I just wanted to say that, I felt compelled to say that, but I do thank my colleagues for the bills that you did introduce and that we are passing today. And with that, on those particular bills, I vote yes. Thank you, Councilmember Adrian Adams as well. Thank you so thank much. You. Councilmember Salamanca. I vote aye on all, thank you. Thank you. Ayala. Ditto on everything that council member Ampri Samuels just said, and I also vote aye. Baron. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you so much. I want to welcome our new colleague, council member Brooks Ross. Welcome. In terms of the legislation that we're talking about today, I vote for the land use, I vote aye on all with the exception of 741. And I am abstaining on 743 and 744. In terms of the legislation, I vote aye on all and commend my colleagues on uh, making a stab at getting 
better conditions and better results for our communities in terms of the interaction that we have had with police, particularly where we have been subjected to uh, racist, discriminatory misconduct by police. And I'm voting, I'm, a, I'm voting no on intro 2212A. What this bill does, I think the intent is great, but it is addressing an issue and putting it into the CCRB, which is a body that has been shown to have not been able to overcome the hurdles and the, the uh, discrepancies and the lack of services and lack of support and the obstacles that have been put in their path. There was a former investigator for the CCRB who gave uh, opening remarks, who gave remarks during a press conference that was held yesterday. And he outlined many of the obstacles that CCRB investigators face. And there's a scripture that says, you don't put new wine in old wine flasks. So we're taking this good idea and putting it into the CCRB, which has been shown to not be effective, to not be able to be independent. And we're expecting that we'll get a different Fine. result. Fine. Thank you. We're expecting that we'll get a different result. Uh, I think that what's gonna happen is that it will burst the wine flask just as new wine does because they're not capable of adapting and adjusting and incorporating these kinds of plans, particularly when they're gonna rely on the police commissioner once again to select who the independent prosecutor is gonna be for those cases that they look into. For that reason, I'm voting no on 2212A, despite its good intent. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Borelli. Thank you, uh, I vote aye on all except intros 1671A 2118A, 2212A, 2220A, 2224A, 2243A, and I vote aye on all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Brennan. Uh, with congratulations to uh, Councilwoman Sylvana Powers on her first stated and her first bill pass at her first stated, which is not an easy feat. Um, and with congratulations to, to all the folks who uh, have legislation today and, and the work continues. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Brooks Powers. Um, I vote aye on all and I ask for permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. So first, I'd like to thank my colleagues for the warm welcome to the council in um, helping with this transition. We have had a very busy, busy stated today, but um, I just want to be on record of saying that um, while I vote in support of these bill, these um, intros today, um, I recognize that there's still uh, much more conversation needed, um, especially with the community as we talk about reforming the NYPD. Um, I thank everyone in their support in the Arvin East project, also, also recognizing um, that it's a great start and there's much more work and collaboration to be done around this to um, help continue to enhance that program. Um, and so, I thank everybody once again. Thank you, and we're so happy to welcome you. Cabrera. Thank you. I'll be voting now on 20, 2224A, uh, 2118A, uh, 2220A, and I'm assuming we're doing the wrestles later, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. You can vote yes then. And I, I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chin. I vote I on all. Thank you. Constantinidis. 
really want to uh, just welcome our new colleague, uh, Council Member Brooks Powers. Welcome uh, to the City Council. We're really looking forward to working with you. And with that, I will vote aye on all. Carnegie. Council Member Carnegie. We'll come back. Council Member Deutsch. Uh, I and all except for intro 2212, 2118, 1671, 2220, 2243. May I vote into Rezos? Not at this. Okay. Not at this time. Thank you. Thank you. One moment. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye, and I'd like to thank and compliment Councilwoman Samuels for, for being the voice. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. Here's an old. Thank you. Drum. Aye, and all. Eugene. I vote aye. Gennaro. I am uh, really delighted to uh, welcome uh, Council Member Brooks Powers. Welcome to the Council. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of proposed intro 1671A, uh, and I vote no on that. Thank you for being a good sport now that you are no longer the newest member <laughs> to the Council. <laughs> Your shine moves quickly. <laughs> Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm Thank sorry. you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to quickly speak about pre-considered Resol 1584, the Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Plan. Uh, I want to appreciate and salute our chair, Adrian Adams, for all of the work that you've done in the midst of countless meetings and briefings, the pain of losing your beloved mother and yet you still managed to stay on top of today's legislative package. I appreciate you so much, my sister. I share the sentiments of colleagues who are frustrated with this process. 187 pages of a plan we received two weeks ago, expected to absorb and come to- Thank you, Council Member Carnegie. We'll now move to Council Member Ku. Time starts now. Uh, I just want to say I want to welcome uh, Council Member Brooks Powers uh, to become our colleagues and happy Passover and happy Easter to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Ku. Are there any members at this time moving forward that wish to speak specifically and only on today's resolutions that we are about to vote on? Council Member Chen. Council Member Chen, you may begin. Uh, thank, you. No. thank you, Majority Leader. I do want to speak on the resolution about the, uh, the police reform plan. And I heard from my colleague, and especially colleagues that I've served with in the past, this is our 12th year, this is our third term together. And we've been fighting for police reform since day one. And we made progress, and this will continue that progress. And it is really important for us to make sure that some of these programs are being implemented and it has to reflect in this year's budget. So the fights continue, but we have to take our responsibility uh, to vote on this resolution today. We don't want the state to withhold any funding from the city, no matter what. As one of my council members said, I think council member Abiel Samuel, we don't want to leave any money on the table, right? And I think that our work has to continue. It's not perfect, but it is our job to move forward and to make it happen. So I really wanna thank council member 
uh, Adam, for your leadership on this, and my colleague in the Black Latino Asian Caucus. We have to take a stronger leadership role in this, and we have to make sure the budget reflect that. Thank you. Council Member Reynoso. Council Member Reynoso, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you. I just want to uh, echo uh, Councilmember Member Barron's points, but also just want to um, just communicate to my colleagues that we are going to have a budget process where these types of issues are constantly raised and um, don't and don't get pushed to the level where we affect meaningful change for our communities, right? If we're going to continue to dabble in incrementalism when it comes to the changes we want to see in the police department, then let's just call it what it is and that we're not looking to substantially reform the police department in a way that it brings justice to our people. Instead, we keep trickling um, in reform. Um, we don't make significant cuts to the budget um, that uh, speak to um, the resources that we truly need, which is secure housing, secure education, secure health care. That's where our communities need their money. Their money. And if we're not going to have those conversations, um, it, it could be problematic. But I would also say that the other side doesn't play the game that we're playing. When Trump was in office, they didn't dabble in incrementalism. And they're currently looking to take away our, our, our voting rights, right? They're like they don't, they don't play the same games we do. They go 100% every single time. And I think it's about time we stop thinking that we're going to be able to make significant progress moving this slowly and start actually being more aggressive about exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to be voting no on that resolution as well. But I do want to say there are some good resolutions in this, in this uh, package. And one of them is uh, Council Member Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's uh, bill, um, which I think is a, a significant step forward to finally holding folks accountable and taking that responsibility away from, you know, self-interested commission. So thank you. Uh, and again, I want to make sure that it's clear that I vote no on the, you know, the mayor's resolution for police reform. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Reynoso. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? No, Madam seeing, Majority Leader. Seeing none, we will now have a voice vote on today's resolutions. If you wish to vote against or abstain from either of today's resolutions, please email the Legislative Documents Unit. Mr. Parliamentarian will send that information to you. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Resolution 1538A calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign S5252 forward slash A6012, which would remove the New York City Police Commissioner's exclusive authority over police discipline. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 <clears throat> All opposed, say nay. No. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 1547 calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign. S2984 forward slash A1951, which would require New York Police Department officers to live within the five boroughs of New York City. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Preconsidered Resolution 1583 calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign S.4482 forward slash A.5092, which would establish the Billionaire Mark to Market Tax Act and to use the revenue generated to establish an excluded worker fund. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 
All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Pre-considered resolution 1584 is a resolution adopting a plan pursuant to state executive order number 203. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 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 You can only say nay once. Nay. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I knew that was you. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mm. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak to, on today's general discussion? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Barron and Lewis. All right, Council Member Barron followed by Council Member Lewis. Time uh, starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. First, I want to uh, again welcome our new colleague. I think I misspoke her name. I believe it's Brooks Powers. I want to correct that on the record. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I want to wish all of my colleagues who are celebrating Passover and who will be celebrating Resurrection Sunday a happy, safe, and great holiday. I want to talk today about the introduction of my legislation that will talk about establishing an elected civilian review board. This is legislation that has been three years in getting to this point. And it's legislation that I was asked to sponsor. And I'm proud to say I'm sponsoring this in conjunction with my colleagues, Jimmy Van Bramer, as well as council member Alika Ampri Samuel. We are excited to say that there are three main components to this legislation. One is that the members of the community of the review board will be elected from 17 districts composed from the 51 districts that are in the city. They will be elected to serve four year terms. They will have to go get petitions and get on the ballot such as we do when we are running from office. The second main tenet is that this elected civilian review board, which is a part of what we're calling the Community Power Act, power standing for police oversight with the elected review, that they will have the ability to receive testimony, conduct hearings, do investigations, make findings, dispose of uh, criminal uh, discriminatory issues and will determine the appropriate uh, consequences for those acts. And all those things that we're now trying to squeeze in little by little are part of this comprehensive plan. And they will have the exclusive, thank you, just a few more seconds. They will have the exclusive authority to determine whether or not to sustain an allegation and the appropriate consequences for that. And thirdly, this legislation calls for an independent independent prosecutor. So the members will no longer be appointed by our august body or by the mayor or by the police department, but they will be elected and there will be an independent prosecutor not appointed by the governor who uses poli who use police uh, to do the investigations, but they will be independent. I ask that you consider sponsoring this bill along with us and look forward to working with you as we push this bill through, okay? It's the Community Power Act, police oversight with elected review. Thank you. Thank you, council member. We'll now move to council member Lewis. Time starts now. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Combo uh, for the opportunity to speak on two critical pieces of legislation that I'm introducing today. As we have seen over the course of the last several months, there is a glaring fault in our protocols related to oversight of public servants with a dangerous lack of police officer accountability. As New Yorkers protested, rallied, and marched for several days this last summer, 
We witnessed <laughs> countless police officers overstepping their authority, ironically assaulting New Yorkers, protesting police brutality. Even with countless indisputable video evidence, there has been little to no disciplinary action taken against officers who pushed, shoved, and beat peaceful protesters. I think you all can agree this is unacceptable. This is why I am proud to introduce two pieces of legislation. Intro 2249, a local law to amend the New York City Charter in relation to the police department's duty to provide officer records to the Civilian Complaint Review Board and Intro 2248, requiring the Civilian Complaint Review Board to conduct an, an investigation of any injury or death caused by police action. By strengthening the Civilian Complaint Review Board and granting them the authority to open cases on behalf of New Yorkers killed or injured as a result of police action, the CCRB will be informed of any such interactions. And we have the ability to hold a greater amount of officers accountable should they believe that their actions warrant punishment. Additionally, by requiring the NYPD to provide the CCRB with officer records, the CCRB will have comprehensive information to make an accurate assessment of whether, of whether there was any wrongdoing on any part of uniform officers. I my colleagues who fought hard last summer for increased police accountability to sign on to intros 2248 and 2249. Thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Council Member Lewis. Are there any other members who wish to speak or we will conclude this meeting? The last council member who wishes to speak is Council Member Adams. Council Member Adams, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you so much once again, uh, Madam Majority Leader. You've done a phenomenal job today. It's been a really, really long stated meeting. Um, I, I just wanted to take an opportunity just to say happy Passover to all who celebrate. Happy Holy Week to all who celebrate. And just to once again express to my colleagues that uh, from my heart, this work that we do isn't easy. Um, and it definitely isn't for the faint of heart. Uh, tough decisions are made by all of us on a daily basis. So I just want to thank you colleagues for your commitment to serve no matter what our differences are. I also wanted to make sure that I thanked everyone that worked so hard to help me climb this mountain today in this legislative package, Speaker Johnson, Jason Goldman, Ebony Meeks Laidley, Kelly Taylor, Lewis Cholden Brown, Indiana Porter, Daniel Addis, Max Camper Williams, Matthew Thompson, Aaliyah Reynolds, Isha Wright, Nevin Singh, Regina Pareda Ryan, Latanya McKinney, and my staff, Jamal Wilkinson and Benjamin Fang. It takes a lot to pull this girl together. Thank you all. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you so much. And again, I want to join in the chorus of welcoming our newest member, Selvina Brooks Powers. It's so exciting to see the Women's Caucus grow. And it's also exciting to see the intentionality of electing women to the city council and beyond. We're seeing it realized right before our very eyes. So we welcome you, we're excited to work with you and our voice just became that much louder. And I just wanna say in closing that I really appreciated the different perspectives in today's stated meeting. It's an important one, but I just wanna add in closing that over, the, over the, the last few years, almost on a weekly basis, we have seen mass shootings all across this country. But what we've also seen with these mass shootings is that as it pertains to white males that have perpetuated these mass shootings, we have seen police departments all across this country deliver the type of professionalism, courtesy and restraint in apprehending these individuals. And that same level of empathy and understanding is what we are demanding for black and brown communities in dealing with issues of law enforcement. We want that, but we understand that we cannot legislate empathy. And so this legislative package is critical to making sure that while we can't legislate empathy, we can issue penalties. And we should not look at this legislative package as punitive, but if they follow the same accord that they do when apprehending these mass shooters all across the country, the rubber would never meet the road on any of these bills that we've passed today. So I will close with that. 
and now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. As always, great job chairing the uh, stated meeting today. The stated meeting of March 25th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Thank you all.